I had a discussion the last couple of days with someone about uh, adverse yaw on a high wing trainer that had a under cambered airfoil. Same thing happens with flat bottom airfoils. The uh, wing has higher pressure underneath it than it does above it because of the curvature on top. And the down going aileron creates more drag than the one that goes up into the low pressure above the wing. And I recommended offsetting the servo arms. It had two aileron servos plugged into one channel with a wire harness. I, re I recommended offsetting the servo arms one tooth. Uh, a lot of servo arms, the shafts, have 24 teeth. If you divide 24 into 360, that gives you 15. So if you take the arm off and move it one tooth toward the leading edge, if it's underneath the wing, and usually they are, you move it one tooth, it gives you 15 degrees of offset at neutral. Now, according to the drawing here, you have to lengthen the push rod by 0.259 inches so that the control surface is centered with this arm offset by one tooth. And um, if the servo travels 40 degrees each side of neutral, then you get 0.56 in the down direction and 0.682 in the up direction. And if you divide 0.682 by 0.56, you get 1.2178. So you get almost 22% more up than you do down. And usually that's enough. Now you can offset the arm two teeth and let's see what happens when you do that. So I'll double click this and put 30. And um, now you've got 0.674 in the up direction and 0.44 in the down direction. And it doesn't quite come around to being away from the control surface. So 0.674 minus or divided by 0.44. Now it's 1.532. So you get 53% more up than down if you offset it by two teeth. Now this is for a one inch uh, length arm. Now the percentage is the same if you go in on the arm or go out on the arm. Um, the actual distance changes when you go in, both distances are shorter, but uh, the percentage stays the same. And um, if I set this to one hundredth of a degree, you see it, it gives you 0.643 in each direction. So the throw is symmetrical. If the arm is perpendicular to the push rod. So anyway, uh, try offsetting the uh, arm. 15 degrees and see if that gives you enough differential. Um, I've never had to go two teeth to 30 degrees. That looks a little extreme to me. I don't think you'll have to do that, but try one tooth and it should make it a lot better. You won't have to use a rudder to coordinate the turn. Um, or mix rudder in with ailerons, the airplane will roll without the uh, down going aileron pulling the nose in the opposite direction of the way you want to turn. So I do this instead of going into the transmitter. Of course, you can't do this in the transmitter unless you use a separate channel for each aileron servo. And that requires a receiver with another channel. And when you do it in the transmitter, uh, 
the transmitter decreases the throw of the servo, which hurts the resolution of it and makes the slack a, bitter, a bigger percentage of the travel. So your, your control surfaces won't position as accurately when you cut down on the travel. So you always need your servos to travel 40 degrees either side of neutral in high rates. Uh, you can go to 45 degrees by turning the high rates up a little bit, but when you turn them down, you're hurting the resolution of the radio and hurting the positioning accuracy of the control surfaces. So anyway, that's how you do mechanical differential. You don't have to go into the computer or go into the transmitter and mess with the settings and all that good stuff. So there you go.